algebra review. Our question says solve, and it gives us the equation 4x over 3 plus x over 6 take away 2 equals x plus 3 over 2. So when a question asks us to solve, it's asking us to figure out a number that we could put in for every single one of these x's that would make the left side of the equation give us the same number as the right side of the equation. So when we're dealing with fractions, one of the things we want to do is get a common denominator. We could get a common denominator for the whole thing, but I like to just do a common denominator for the left side and then a common denominator for the right side. So if I take a look at the numbers on the left side, I notice the first fraction has a denominator of 3, the second fraction has a denominator of 6, and then this 2 doesn't have a denominator, but it secretly has a denominator of 1 hiding underneath it. So I need to find something that 3, 6, and 1 all go into. So I like to pick the largest number that's there, 6, and see whether or not 3 and 1 will go into it, which it does. So I'm going to make a common denominator on the left side of 6. And I'm actually just going to do one very large line with a denominator of 6, and I'm going to put all the terms on the top. So my first fraction, I'm going to ask myself, what did we have to do to a 3 to turn it into a 6? And the answer is we multiplied it by 2. So whatever I do to the bottom of the fraction, we also do to the top of the fraction. So 2 times 4x is going to give me 8x. Right. The second fraction, we had x over 6. What did I do? Nothing. We multiplied by 1, but we don't even need to do that. So since the denominator didn't change, I'm just going to copy down that it's plus x. And then the last fraction, we had a secret denominator of 1. How do I turn a 1 into a 6? We multiplied it by 6. So negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the equation. So I have x and 3 over 2. So the 3 over 2 has a denominator of 2, and that x, although it doesn't look like it has a denominator, has a secret denominator of 1. So we need a number that 1 and 2 both go into. So I always look to the largest number first. 2. Does 1 divide nicely into 2? Yes, it does. So we're going to go on this side for a common denominator of 2. So how did I do that? We're going to take a look at how I turn a 1 into a 2. I'd have to multiply it by 2. And whatever you do to the bottom, we do to the top. So x times 2 is 2x. And then the second fraction, 3 over 2, what did I do to the denominator? Nothing. So I'm just going to leave it as plus 3. So now that I have a common denominator, all I'm going to do is collect up any like terms that I might have. So on this side, I have 8x plus x minus 12. So these are both x terms, so I can add those together because they have the same variable. So 8x plus x gives me 9x. And then that take away 12 does not have an x, so they're not like terms and I can't add it with the 9. And then on the other side, 2x plus 3, one has an x, one does not, so they're not like terms. So it's just going to stay 2x plus 3 over 2. So next step, we're going to do something called cross-multiplying. So when we cross multiply it, we take the denominator from one side and we multiply it by the numerator on the other side. And then we're going to take the denominator from this side and multiply it by the numerator on that side. So we're going to take everything on the left side and multiply it by 2, and then everything on the right side and multiply it by 6. So 2 times 9x is 18x. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. And then we do 6 times 2x is 12x. And 6 times 3 is 18. 
So we took 9x minus 2 and multiplied it by 2. We took 2x plus 3 and multiplied that by 6. And now you'll notice we don't have any more fractions, right? So we found a way by getting a common denominator and cross multiplying to eliminate those fractions so that we don't have to worry about them anymore. So from here, we're just going to solve the equation. Um, first thing I want to do is get all of the x's on one side. So my personal rule is that I will move the smallest number. So that would be the 12x is smaller than 18. So I'm going to take 12x away from both sides. 18x take away 12x leaves me with 6x. Take away 24. And then on this side, we're just left with that positive 18. And then when we're solving the equation, we want to do opposite order of operations. So normally order of operations, we do bed mass. So opposite, we're going to do SAMDEB. So first thing we look for is any addition or subtraction. So here we're subtracting 24. So we're going to do the opposite and add 24. So I have 6x left on the left. Negative 24 plus 24 is 0. 18 plus 24 gives me 42. And then we move on to any division or multiplication we might have. So I have a multiply by 6. So we're going to do the opposite and divide by 6. So that leaves me with 1x or just x. And 42 divided by 6 is 7. So I get an answer of x equals 7. If I want to check to see if my answer of 7 is correct, I can go back to the original equation. I can put 7 in everywhere I see an x and then work out the left side, work out the right side, and hopefully I get the same number. That way I'll know my answer is correct. But the question did not ask me to check. It just said solve. So I'm just going to leave it at an answer of x equals 7. And that's solving equations with fractions.